right there. Yeah. Well, of course, the part I love the most is the congregate meal programs where seniors can come together and visit and share a meal. I, this has been such a treat to meet you, and congratulations on the good work you're doing. I wish this program all the success. Thank you. Okay, thank, thank you, you for very being much. our guest. It's my pleasure, absolutely. And thank you for joining us as well here on Aging Well in L.A. See you next time. Kevin from Chatsworth, offering you a taste of New Orleans since 1986. You're watching LA City View, Channel 35. Our city, our channel. In LA this week, more than 2 million gallons of sewage water spewing onto streets and into the ocean after a sewer line burst in downtown LA. We'll have the quick response from LA Sanitation on this stinky mess. I'm Rasha Goel. Up next, how LA is teaming up with Google to come up with some needed innovative solutions for the city. I'm Anna Margos. Hop aboard for a bit of history. We'll take you on the USS Iowa as it celebrates its four-year anniversary and the opening of a new museum. That's all coming up. Hello and welcome to LA This Week. Thanks for joining us. I'm Yana Kay. Well, a sewage spill doesn't happen often, but when it does, it can cause a big and stinky mess. But the city proved during a recent spill that it's ready to take quick action to make sure the impact on you and your community is minimized. Gil Reyes has more from downtown LA. Gil. Yes, Yana, not one of the more pleasant stories we've had to cover here at L.A. this week. I can tell you standing out here, the smell is horrible, but this is what happens when sewage spews onto nearby streets and into the ocean after a pipe burst here in downtown Los Angeles. The industrial area around 6th and Mission Road overflowing with dirty water. An underground sewage pipe broke on July 18th. Crews rushed to install a temporary bypass pipe to contain the flow. Officials say this band-aid of sorts will bring systems at area homes and businesses pretty much back to normal. This work, the bypass is being put in here, takes usually two weeks to do. It's being done less than 24 hours. Uh, we think this is something that we stepped up and we are working very hard to minimize impact. L.A. Sanitation's Adele Hush-Khalil says the temporary pipe will suffice until a permanent one is installed. Crews had noticed problems with the old pipe about a week earlier and had planned to install a new one soon. But the unexpected rupture forced an emergency fix-up. Some of the dirty water flowed into the L.A. River polluting beaches and forcing closures as far away as Long Beach and Seal Beach. L.A. City officials say a sewer break like this hasn't happened in decades. This is something that happened, an accident that happened. We are investigating it, hopefully afterwards, to see what we need to do. We're very smart, we'll learn from it, and we'll make sure it's, it's preventable in the future. The sewer we're dealing with today uh, is was built in 1929, so approaching it uh, very soon, its 100th anniversary. So you are dealing with an aging infrastructure. We try to be very proactive on our 
sewer replacement and repair program. Officials say the city of Los Angeles has spent over $2 billion over the past decade upgrading our sewer system. In downtown L.A., I'm Gil Reyes for L.A. This Week. L.A. Sanitation says 2.4 million gallons of untreated waste spilled onto the L.A. River. Though this briefly closed parts of Seal Beach and Long Beach, L.A. City beaches, including Venice, were not affected. While well, L.A. residents say housing the homeless is one of their top concerns, and for city leaders, it's been an ongoing challenge. After declaring homelessness a crisis in L.A., city officials took it to the state level to get even more help. Anna Marcos has the details. City and state leaders toured this vacant lot to show that in this lot, as in most corners of L.A., the reminders of homelessness are everywhere. Everybody, no one is exempted from this. Everyone's got to do their part. So if you've got a vacant lot, you can't let it become a homelessness encampment. If you've got a vacant lot, you can't let it become a crime magnet. Many here say homelessness has reached a crisis point in cities like L.A. and San Francisco. And now city and county officials have rallied behind state lawmakers who just passed H.R. 56, a resolution declaring a state of emergency on homelessness in California. It means rapid rehousing. It means helping those who have mental health challenges. It means getting people off the streets, not shoveling them around the corner so that their dignity and worth is restored. After all, they are members of our community. And the homeless have changed. We're not talking about just individuals now. We're talking about families. We're talking about little kids. This morning we were driving around my district in Skid Row. And there are little kids out there hungry without a home. This is inexcusable. There are more than 100,000 homeless residents in California, more than in any state in the country. A good portion of them, almost 48,000, are homeless right here in L.A. County. As long as there's somebody who's living in a car, somebody who's living in a tent, that is not our city of angels. The state legislature has also passed the No Place Like Home program, which will pump close to $2 billion into fighting homelessness throughout the state. I'm Anna Marcos for L.A. This Week. City leaders say in spite of the problems, they have made some progress on homelessness. They've set aside $138 million in the city budget this year to fight it, and they've quadrupled the number of outreach teams on the streets of Skid Row. They've also housed 6,000 war vets in the last three years. Well, if you've ever looked for an affordable apartment in L.A., then you know how challenging it can be. Making matters even worse, the number of people moving to the city is outpacing available places to live, creating a housing crisis. Experts weighed in recently on what can be done to turn things around. And Marcos was there. The bottom line is L.A. needs to build more housing. Market rate housing, affordable housing, shelters, supportive housing for the homeless. And it needs to happen fast. In L.A. County, we're about half a million units short of what we need to meet the demand for affordable housing. We cannot stay in this deficit and expect that our city is going to continue to be livable. The East Area Progressive Democrats put on this panel of housing experts to talk about the affordable housing crisis and what the group is calling high-rise development stress. Communities displaced or changed with high-rise development for which the city isn't even collecting development impact fees. Now, we know that if those development impact fees were being uh, collected at a more rigorous level, as they do with parking tickets, uh, we would have some more revenue to do affordable housing development in the city. Land costs and development costs are high, and um, incomes are relatively low compared to most communities in the state. So we get this kind of double whammy of badness. Even the city's rent control is losing its teeth as L.A. continues to lose more and more of its affordable housing units. Any units built after 1978 aren't even covered under rent control, 
which means more and more of these rent-controlled units are falling off the market. The rent burden makes a difference in how people live and what they can afford. When they're paying so much for rent, they can't afford medicine and food. Meanwhile, high-rise luxury units run at a 12% vacancy rate, while affordable housing remains scarce. I'm a huge fan of building affordable housing in any way that we can. Organizers say the purpose of the panel wasn't to find solutions, but to begin to hammer out possible ideas and to hold government leaders accountable for what has become a full-blown housing crisis. I'm Anna Marcos for L.A. This Week. You'll get a chance to vote on two housing ballot measures soon, the Build a Better L.A. measure on November 7th and the Neighborhood Integrity Initiative on March 7th. While the city reaches out to developers for ideas on the housing the homeless, small business owners get a lesson on growing their business by using city resources, and parking just got a lot easier for a popular multicultural destination. All these stories in City B. The city of Los Angeles is calling on developers to submit plans for building homeless housing at eight city-owned properties. City leaders are looking to build more housing for the homeless as part of a larger plan to fight homelessness in Los Angeles, where about 27,000 people are thought to be living on the streets. City officials are asking affordable housing developers to submit proposals for what they believe can be done with the eight properties. A small business workshop was held recently to help small business owners grow and prosper. The workshop, hosted by the L.A. Chamber of Commerce Small Business Council, focused on the business resources and opportunities available through the mayor's office. It also highlighted the new tools available through the city's new small business portal and startup guide. The business.lacity.org website offers everything from registering a new business to marketing techniques. Governments have to know that you're there and you have to know what's available to you and there has to be some type of mechanism for that and I think what the mayor is doing with this is, is absolutely in the right direction. One year after the groundbreaking, Plaza de la Raza's parking lot was officially unveiled to the public by the Department of Recreation and Parks and District 1 council member Gil Cedillo. Situated in the heart of East Los Angeles in Lincoln Park, Plaza de la Raza Cultural Center for the Arts and Education is the only multicultural venue of its kind in the city. With 30 new parking stalls, new landscaping, lighting, and seating area, officials say the newly designed parking lot will improve accessibility and safety for those visiting the cultural center. Now the community can utilize this without all the conflict and the drama and all the stress that was involved every time we came to an event. L.A. has made great strides in going green and creating a more sustainable future for us all. And the port of L.A. has played a big part in that transformation. Rasha Goel has more on the latest work being done and how the effort is helping advance Mayor Eric Garcetti's sustainable city plan. The work may be happening at the port, but it affects all Angelinos. Zero emissions means cleaner air for all of us. And it's something that's been among the city's top priorities. In the last decade, we've cut emissions at the port by half, more than half. And diesel particulate matter and other pollutants are down by more than 80 percent. That's an incredible thing. Mayor Eric Garcetti continues to advance his sustainable city plan by recently appointing a 10-member sustainable freight advisory committee who will work together with port officials to advance sustainable growth and expand the use of zero emission technology at the port. By 2025, 15 percent of our goods movement trips should be zero emissions. I'm looking forward to this group advising me on a large and wide-ranging series of issues, including how to accelerate the introduction of equipment that we know will help us meet our air quality goals and commitments. In June of this year, the port announced the Pesha Green Omni Terminal project that will pilot various zero and near-zero emissions good movement technologies. The Green Omni Terminal is a solar-powered facility that will move goods from ships to the terminals to clean truck and rail transportation to their final destination. Pesha will be the first marine terminal in the world capable of generating all of its energy from renewable sources in an emergency situation. This is groundbreaking work. The terminal is being funded in part by a $14.5 million grant from the California Air Resources Board. Today marks the beginning of a multi-source project 
that will help reduce pollution in communities near our ports. These communities are the most severely impacted by port activities and they greatly need better air quality. The aim is to improve health and quality of life for residents not only near the port, but also for everyone in Los Angeles. I'm Rasha Goel for LA This Week. The port also announced a series of grants which will allow it to test 20 near-zero natural gas power tractors and five zero-emission plug-in battery tractors at the Everport Container Terminal. Well, remember what it was like as a kid during summer vacation? Well, there was nothing better. And if you got to go to summer camp, that was just the icing on the cake. And thanks to Camp Wesson, some kids in underserved neighborhoods got to experience just that. And at no cost to their parents. Gil Reyes reports. Kids from the inner city excited to board the bus to summer camp. They're on their way to three days and two nights at Camp Wesson. This is Haley Smalls' third visit. Um, what I want to say is that more people should start coming here because this camp is one of the best camps in the world. It's also a mini summer vacation for working moms like Haley's mom. Yeah, give me a break. I have three days. I'm going to work hard today, but tomorrow I'm going to take a day off and do something for me. Camp Wesson is the annual summer camp organized by L.A. City Council President Herb Wesson. It primarily serves families from disadvantaged areas in central and south L.A. It's for children who usually can't go to camp because of the high cost, but this camp is free. Shorts, shirts, swimming trunks, and food included. The 10th year, uh, I cannot believe that it uh, has been so long. It's something that the staff here and I look forward to on a yearly basis. So we're excited. We're going to have 100 kids. We'll be up at Hanson Dam. They'll be staying in tents. You're almost there. Keep going. We catch up with the group at Hanson Dam later in the week. The rock climbing wall is a popular but difficult challenge. Hardly anyone makes it to the top on the first try. A life lesson for us all. About uh, never giving up, reaching your goals, and uh, I'm today working with the climbing wall, which we stress about not giving up, continuing to try, and uh, some of these kids are pretty good. First try I did it, and then the second time I fell once and got back up and went back up there and touched the bell. <laughs> You got it. You got it. Get it. I'm going to do it this time. That's what you said? Yes. And you did it? Yes, I did. All right. More fun awaits at the lake. Paddle boarding, kayaking, jet skis, towing kids for a tour of the lake. There's all sorts of splashing around. I've been swimming in the pool for these past few days with my counselor and the other kids that I made friends with. Belinda Gonzalez is good at making friends, but not so good at kayaking, at least not at first. She got better, though, by listening to her counselors. They taught her to rotate her torso while paddling and to practice. I forgot that we didn't have to give up. We just had to try harder and harder. And you did better the second time? Yes. Councilman Wesson wishes he had the same summer experiences when he was a kid. I remember as a child, uh, my mother not having the money to send me to camp. So she saved the money but I had to be on the waiting list and I had to sit there and watch a whole busload of kids leave because my name was never called so I was determined to uh, try to afford the kids in, in my community a free trip to camp. The kids are in for another surprise when they arrive home. We'll have more on that on an upcoming episode. Reporting from Camp Wesson, I'm Gil Reyes for LA This Week. And by the way, this year marks Camp Wesson's 10th anniversary. The community group known as Project Save has helped fund the camp for its 10 straight successful seasons. Well, you now have one more reason to visit the historic USS Iowa on the San Pedro Harbor. It now boasts a new museum. Anna Marcos takes us there for a look at naval history. This retired battleship is more than just another tourist site. It provides a floating reminder of U.S. military might and power. And now on its fourth anniversary, it will give viewers a new window on naval history with the opening of its museum. 
one of the big draws, an exhibit on the explosion that killed 47 crew members in 1989 during a peacetime exercise. You'll see some of the exact pieces of metal and steel uh, that was actually crushed through uh, compression and the pressure of the explosion. But we also wanted to share the fact that uh, gunnery has always been a dangerous business in the Navy. The USS Iowa served 20 years in active service and 50 years in reserve service, navigating our country through World War II, the Korean War, and many other world events, both in wartime and peacetime. This vessel uh, was used to carry so many folks uh, to help defend and to fight for our country. These 360-degree panoramas allow visitors to see parts of the ship that aren't open to the public, like boiler rooms, engine rooms. And there's even a brig, which is kind of like a jail. If you were a bad soldier, you got slammed in here for three days with just bread and water. Well, I know they're built for, for lots of things, so war. There's lots of people died in the ship for us, this generation. The U.S. commissioned 49 battleships for war. Only eight were saved. The USS Iowa is the last of those and the only remaining battleship on the continental west coast. A piece of history in L.A.'s own backyard. I'm Anna Marcos for L.A. This Week. For more information and tours aboard the USS Iowa, visit PacificBattleship.com. Well, police and firefighters test their endurance in a brutal CrossFit workout. As Gil Reyes reports, it's all in the name of community relations. Three, two, one, go! L.A. City police and firefighters push their bodies to the limit in a friendly but grueling competition. It's also a chance to offer safety tips to fans in the sidelines, like Briley Hara and her dad, Kyle. I think it's also important that she has exposure to fire department and police department so she knows who they are and she knows who to trust. Look at these pull-ups. These ladies are staying on the pull-up bar. First responders giving it their all in the Safe Summer CrossFit Challenge. It's LAFD versus LAPD in competitions like the dummy drag, kettlebells, box jumps, and tire flips. The agency with the most repetitions at the end of the contest wins. They get right to work. No rest for these amazing athletes. Who's for LAPD? Let me hear it. <laughs> Who's for LAFD? <laughs> That's pretty close. Fire Chief Ralph Tarasas and Police Chief Charlie Beck team up for what's also a family safety fair at USC's Galen Center. Off to the side, this car wreck display shows kids the importance of not speeding and always wearing seat belts. Pamphlets on pool safety are also handed out, all done in a fun, outdoorsy, sportsmanlike environment. Oftentimes, uh, you know, uh, folks don't get to meet their police officers except for, uh, you know, in a, in a stressful situation for both people involved. And so that's not a good way to start a relationship. The best way to start a relationship is through common activity, and that's what we're doing today. In the end, LAPD wins it. Then again, everybody wins in events like this. At USC's Galen Center, I'm Gil Reyes for LA This Week. To avenge the loss, Fire Chief Ralph Terrazas hopes to challenge the LAPD in a chilly cook-off contest next year. While city leaders and the biggest name in tech are hoping to open a new window and a new perspective on some of LA's most pressing challenges. And it all starts with some creative thinking. Rasha Goel has more. Yana, I'm here at Pico House in downtown Los Angeles where the Information Technology Agency has partnered up with Google Innovation Labs to bring together 50 city leaders to discuss innovative solutions to some of the city's greatest problems. Through a six-week series of five classes, Google Innovation Labs is giving city leaders the tools to better use its technology and data to help solve issues. City leaders are also given access to Google Enterprise apps along with experts for consultations. Take that innovation, combine it with LA's key issues around homelessness, around a changing job force, around business development, and use Google X, Google Innovative Thinking, partnered with City Knowledge to try to really implement 
radical transformational solutions. Several teams made of city leaders have come together to pick five hard challenges in our city to propose possible solutions. The outcomes we're looking for here are some ideas for prototypes, whether they be new business processes, new technologies, real solutions for some of these problems and opportunities to change the way the city works. The City of Angels identified five issues, citizen engagement, preventing homelessness, workforce recruitment and development, public safety, and economic development. LAFD Chief Ralph Terrazas identified one of the key points his team is working on. Well, number one is uh, the ability to train the public on what our plan is for a, a natural disaster or a man-made disaster. So the general manager of EMD suggested that we uh, focus on how to train the communities. But training is just one piece of the puzzle. Getting you involved is another. By taking a more proactive approach in participating, the city says you will not only help Los Angeles, but yourself as well. We want to have the best quality people delivering the best services to L.A. At the completion of the series, the teams will present their ideas and solutions for further evaluation. In downtown Los Angeles, I'm Rasha Goel for L.A. This Week. This series will be completed towards the end of August. Well, an Asian celebration centered around flowers brings people of all varieties together. Gil Reyes reports from the Lotus Festival in Echo Park. Here is nature's sign that summer is in full bloom at Echo Park Lake. The lotus flowers have blossomed. Time for the annual Lotus Festival. It's a celebration of Asian Pacific Islander culture and so much more. So we just thought we'd stop by. And also we're... Um, Asians, so we thought it'd be nice to um, come here and connect with our ethnic roots. Everyone seems to be really engaged and into the whole idea of connecting back to an ethnic culture, so I think it's good for everyone. The lotus flower is a symbol of life and rebirth in Asian culture. The festival is held every summer at Echo Park Lake, site of the largest lotus bed in the United States. And in Los Angeles, one of the most diverse cities, the event, filled with music and dance, has become all-inclusive, bringing people of all types together to celebrate summer. Well, usually we go for bike rides down to Venice Beach, but we decided we wanted to do something different today, so we... Uh went on the internet and Googled events in Los Angeles, and this came up in the search. This year, the festival pays special tribute to the Republic of Korea, hosting Kamdo, or Korean martial arts demonstrations. Well, every year, of course, there's a different Asian culture that the festival is celebrating, and so there's always a little bit of a difference every year. And then, of course, we've had the lake renewed over the last five years, six years, the lake was closed and then refurbished, and so it's beautiful now. Cell phone video catches Echo Park's councilman, Mitch O'Farrell, and his staff competing in the Dragon Boat Race, a signature event. And we finished the race in six minutes and 15 seconds, so not too bad. Woo! Yeah! Yeah! Here's Team Mitch right here. Let's all be safe this summer. Let's love one another. Let's listen to one another. Um, let's respect one another, especially in this tough season with things the way they are out in the world and out in the country with all these divisions. Um, we can do a lot more just to come together because at the end of the day, we have vastly more in common with one another. While celebrating life. At the Lotus Festival, I'm Gil Reyes for L.A. This Week. This was L.A.'s 36th Lotus Festival. The event takes place every July. Well, if you're a Star Wars fan, then this trilogy will transport you once again to a galaxy far away. Enjoy a summer night out at an annual summer festival at the L.A. Zoo and a contest for aspiring radio producers. All this in this week's Things to Do. Somewhere in space, this may all be happening right now. A long time ago in a galaxy far, far away... It's been 39 years since audiences first read those words on movie screens. 39 years since we first learned of the Force, of Jedi, lightsabers, X-Wings, and the Death Star. But even after all those years, the Force is still strong with all of us. This August, the Alamo Drafthouse will celebrate our love for the movie trilogy. 
with rare digital screenings of the special edition versions of A New Hope, The Empire Strikes Back, and The Return of the Jedi. It all begins on Saturday, August 6th at the Ace Hotel. Visit DraftHouse.com for more. Brew at the L.A. Zoo returns for the summer, featuring more than 40 local craft and microbreweries, eclectic live music lineup, DJ Johnny Hawks, dancing, pub-style grub, VIP lounge with food, specialty drinks, and early access. Zookeeper talks, up-close animal encounters, and visits to habitats. It all takes place Friday, August 5th from 7 to 11 p.m. at the Los Angeles Zoo and Botanical Gardens. For more, visit lazoo.com. KCRW's fourth annual 24-hour radio race is a whirlwind day of high-stakes radio making for producers of any experience level. You'll have 24 hours to write, record, and edit a non-fiction radio story based on a theme. There will be prizes galore, including the opportunity to have your piece featured on KCRW's Unfictional. It's an opportunity to produce the most original, the most moving, the most inventive, the most unexpected piece of instant radio anyone will hear in 2016. This year's race will take place Saturday, August 6th to Sunday, August 7th. Register at kcrw.com slash radio race between now and midnight of August 5th. And that's a look at some things to do. Well, that's going to do it for this edition. I'm Yana Kay, and from all of us here at L.A. This Week, thanks for joining us. A reminder that you can catch us online at lacityview.org. You can also follow and like us on Facebook. We'll see you back here next week for more of L.A. This Week. Patty, this isn't going to hurt me one bit. Hi, I'm Dr. Eric Shapiro in beautiful Encino, and you're watching LA City View, Channel 35. Our city, our channel. Open wide.
I just figured I'd... I got a gavel up here. I figure we'll see if it works. Anyway, uh, good morning. It's Friday, August 5th. I want to welcome you to your Los Angeles City Council uh, meeting. We are very fortunate to be in the uh, Van Nuys City Hall in the Valley today. Uh, Madam Clerk, I believe we have a, uh, a quorum. Would you please call the roll? Blumenfeld, Bonin, Buscaino, Zedillo, Englander, Fuentes, Harris, Dawson, Weizar, Coretz, Krikorian, Martinez, O'Farrell, Price, Rue, Wesson, 11, uh, 12 members, and a quorum, Mr. President. Thank you very much. First order of business. Approval of the minutes. Okay, Mr. Price moves. Uh, Mr. Rue seconds. Next. Commendatory resolutions for approval. Mr. Koretz moves. Mr. Bond in seconds. Continue. Mr. President, items one through six are items for which public hearings have been held. There is a technical correction for item four. Recommendation for council action is pursuant to motion Buscaino O'Farrell, and it is the Department of Cultural Affairs that will be assisting the city administrative officer with the issuance of the request for a proposal. Okay. So, uh, specials? Member specials? Then let's uh, prepare to uh, move on the remaining items. Let's open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. Twelve eyes. That brings us where? Mr. President, item number seven is an item for which public hearing has not been held. Ten votes are required for consideration. Okay, so without objection, that item is now before this body. Do we have uh, cards? Yes, Mr. President. Okay, let's uh, continue. In fact, oh. we're... Um, that would take us into the special meeting, and we're a little early for that, right? No, the special meeting, uh, you can start... Wait, is it... It's 10.15, sir, so... Okay, so why don't we... Uh, Mr. Rue... I think we can go to presentations at this point in time. So why don't we uh, defer to Mr. Rue? Okay. Thank you, Mr. President. Good morning, Council President and colleagues. I am honored to be here today to celebrate the work and achievements of the Gracias Music Foundation. For over 15 years, the foundation has made it their mission to provide world-class concerts, resources, and musical education. They have taught music to people of all backgrounds, classes, and nationalities. Their work reaches community groups such as schools, retirement centers, military bases, foster care homes, and even correctional facilities. Today, the Foundation's choir is considered one of the best and have won prestigious awards all around the world. They have toured and performed for state dignitaries and delegations worldwide. Congratulations to the Gracias Music Foundation and thank you for your sharing your love of music. And at this time, I'd like to introduce David Pen 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 yes. Penoyer, Chairman of the Gracias Music Foundation. David, thank you. Mr. President, Council Members, ladies and gentlemen, Thank you so much this morning for allowing us to come before you. The International Youth Fellowship and the Gracias Music Foundation were established with and for the people of Los Angeles. And the reason why is because we actively promote civic responsibility, both locally and nationally. We provi provide positive alternatives to drugs, alcohol, gangs, and other destructive behavior. Our youth-centered programs provide hope encouragement, leadership, compassion, and provide positive a mindset. The newly formed GMF is helping to fill the gap in music education brought about by funding cuts to public school music curriculum. Our events are free and are intended to get the message of change to the people through music and to educate them as to who we are and what we represent. The youth are the leaders of tomorrow. We need your help in preparing them for the leadership roles they will need to fill in the future. Let's work together in preparing the youth of today for tomorrow's challenges. 
Now, as an example, we brought three young uh, Gracias Music Foundation students before you today, and they will play uh, a song for you. So I introduce them. Well, thank you. Will we stop? I don't want disrespect shown to these young people. The floor is yours. And you know who I'm talking to, Mr. Spindler. Respect these people. Go ahead. Thank you very much. That was beautiful. And Mr. Th Rue? Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you so very much. And, you know, nothing, uh, nothing starts at best. The first meeting in the Van Nuys uh, City Council, a uh, city hall in the Valley with the sound of music. And with that, I'd like to present on behalf of the Los Angeles City Council uh, a certificate to the Gracias Music Foundation for all the work and all the civic work that they do. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. In closing, you. I would say you're all invited. We're going to have an outdoor music concert down at Grand Park right in front of City Hall, 730 on the 14th of August. So please come. You'll really like it. Thank you so much for that invitation. I'd like to now defer to Mr. Blumenfield. Colleagues, I want to, um, you know, a lot of times we, we have different presentations, but sometimes we, we want to stop, stop and recognize Good Samaritans. And today is one of those days, I want to bring some folks up here, where I wanted to take a moment to recognize some folks in the community who have gone above and beyond to, uh, to help others. Uh, there's two different sets of Good Samaritans I want to recognize. Uh, Probably most of you heard about Captain Sean Stilson of the Los Angeles Fire Department who passed away in 2016, uh, this year. But the fire department held his uh, memorial on May 6th, and he had served for 30 years. He was it was amazing. Uh, he was promoted to Captain 2 in November, where he was assigned to special duty. And he earned, his res he earned the respect of fellow firefighters uh, throughout the area and the community. But what I want to do is I want to acknowledge someone, Greg Woodbury, who's here. Because Greg Woodbury, when he heard about the passing, he's the owner of the Peasant Wine Bistro in Tarzana. Uh, and he had, he had a, quite a relationship with Fire Station 93. So when he heard about uh, the unfortunate passing, without hesitation, he dedicated his time and resources, catered the memorial service for Captain Sean Stilson, uh, and really stepped up to help honor uh, the fire department, to help honor 
um, his, uh, his memory. And I wanted to, because of that, recognize you uh, for doing that. And I have a certificate for you here. Thank you. Great. Thank, thank you, you very much. No, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and then uh, there's some, a couple other folks who are good Samaritans I want to honor as well today. Uh, just recently, June 25th, 9.30 p.m., there was a fatal car accident on Ventura Boulevard. Uh, very close to my house. I, I heard all about it. Uh, three people lost their lives in this sad incident. Others were gravely injured. Some were trapped in their cars. But just after it happened, there were some good Samaritans who rushed to the aid of the vehicles using fire extinguishers, buckets of water to calm the flames until firefighters arrived at the scene. The name of these good Samaritans are Sean Jones, James Magnana, and Thomas Henze. These gentlemen put their lives on the line for strangers in need. Thomas pried open the doors and put out the fire. Sean performed CPR. James, who managed the restaurant across the way, heard the crash, ran out, helping, calling 911, and, and uh, helping keep the scene clear. Sean, James, and Thomas went above and beyond. They do what we all hope we would do in those kind of crisis situations. Uh, and I thought it was important that we recognize them as good Samaritans uh, here in Los Angeles. So let's, let's give Sean, James, and Thomas a hand. I think Sean's not here, right? So Thomas, give you this, and James. Thank you, sir. Great, thank you. Thank you very much. Photo. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. Let's give it up for our good Samaritans. Again, thank you guys so very much for your service. Now, I have one other presentation here, and it's uh, a little bit of a surprise. Uh, Safi, where are you? Come on up here for a second. Safi is a member of my team, uh, outgoing field rep for Reseda. He has sadly gotten the bug and is going to be moving to Washington. Uh, but he, he's a guy who was raised in Reseda, graduated from Cleveland High School, attended Pierce College, graduated California State University, Northridge, with a bachelor's in political science. Had no idea we're going to be honoring him today. He's got a little look of shock on his face. Uh, I met Safi when he began in my office as an intern when I was in the state assembly. In 2012, we hired him as a field rep. Uh, when I was elected to city council, he came with us being a field deputy. He stepped up. Oddly enough, we were... Uh, in the state, it was, our office was right around the corner from, from this compound here. Uh, his commute wasn't too bad back then when we were coming to the state over here. But when we moved to city council, my office was directly across the street from his house. In many ways, uh, you know, he thinks that's why I ran for city council, so that the office could be closer to his house. Uh, and I was glad to accommodate that. And, uh, you know, because of that, he often was the guy when we had an emergency to open up the office early or late. We're like, Safi, roll out of bed, please. Just, just uh, go across the street and help us out. And he would always, he would always do it and cover for whatever we needed. Uh, he's been an invaluable member of the team. In addition to covering Reseda, he was handling public safety, uh, in charge of community beautification, emergency preparedness, leading us on community cleanups and our national night out events. In addition to his official duties, he often did a lot of internal issues in the office. He was our, our go-to on when we made the difficult decision in the district office is what to have for lunch. And uh, Safi knows all the cuisines of the West Valley. Uh, every day he brings his compassion, his tenacity, uh, and humor to our office. I speak for my whole staff. Safi, you're going to be missed when you go off to, uh, to D.C., to our nation's capital. You're an integral part of the team. Um, but as you know, you can, you can, you can leave Team Bloomingfield. You get off the payroll, but you're always part of the team, and, and we appreciate you. And, and because of that, we have this certificate signed by uh, all the members of city council and the mayor uh, to recognize your years, many years of service, and the gratitude that we all have for, you, for what you've done for my team and for the city. Let's give it up for Safi. Right. Sir. 
Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Bloomingfield. We're going to go to item seven, Miss uh, Donna Pierman, Miriam Fogler. Number seven. Is Ms. Fogler here, Mr. Herman? Mr. Herman, item seven. Mr. Spindler, Mr. Walsh, item seven. Good morning, everyone. You all know about Eric Reddy, R-E-A-D-E, who works for the prosecutors. What does he do with LAPD when he comes banging on your door? Ran escrow, we're here to collect. Hello? Get the hell out of the house. This is rent escrow. You violated la cucaracha command here. But no one cares. Let people live in their homes. Rent escrow does a good job because it ensures that the public have access to safe facilities. So when the Iron Maiden, the trooper, comes to Van Nuys, he says to you, Eric Rade, R-E-A-D-E, and Hugo Rosser, the prosecutors of the DA, stop fucking with people in their homes. Okay, Mr. Walsh, Mr. Spindler. Uh, two minutes. That's right. Yes, oh, the other day, one minute. That's against the law. Uh, John Walsh blogging at HollywoodHighlands.org or blogging at J. Walsh Confidential, tweeting at Hollywood Dems. Come to our website. You'll see some shocking things. This, con this concerns REAP and uh, what this means is that if your landlord doesn't keep your property up to code and uh, you inform your landlord and your landlord does nothing, then you go to the city. And what the city tells your landlord is if you don't bring that property, that rental unit up to code, you don't pay, your, land, your tenant doesn't pay the rent to you anymore they pay it to us and we hold on to it till you repair the uh, violations. This is very good. Remember, I don't get a parent if you want a bunch of crooks, that old white guy crap. When you do a good job, I am the first to congratulate you. This is an excellent, excellent program. And... Uh, all I had to do was threaten the landlord with this program, and he fixed things up. I didn't have to invoke it, okay? So I'm th what I'm saying again and again up here is when I'm here to praise you, all of you, if you do a good job. If you screw up, I'm here to vomit all over you. Okay, Mr. Spindler. <clears throat> the pig will address... This is the problem with the city. How did these people get put on this list? First, they go to the threat management unit. Then, they go to building and safety. Then, they go to Hugo Rossiter and Vivian Swan again. Then, they arrest you on a false charge and No, you're not on the subject. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Spindler. Get back on the subject. Is the rent escrow account program. This is police enforcement code enforcement unit is a fucking police matter. Police power. And these good people all got put on this list. Why? Because they failed to pay off the building inspector at the first visit. Unfortunately, in the city, 
This is the reality, not the law. The reality is when you go and you have a rental property, the first thing you have to do when you see the building inspector and he says, what does he say, Mr. Mr. Dummy? May I look in the backyard, sir? We're from Building and Safety. We would like to go in the backyard and inspect the property. It will just take a minute. When you hear that, you say, no, no, you cannot come on my property. Then what do you do, sir? Then you call your attorney, the Diamond Law Firm. That's right. Call the Diamond Law Firm if you have bidding inspectors on your rental property. Failure to do so will result in economic harm and deprivation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, let's prepare to uh, vote on this item. Let's open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. 14 ayes. Mr. Uh, Cedillo, would you like to proceed with your presentation? Mr. President, uh, thank you for the opportunity to, um, to address uh, this body. Uh, as we talked about earlier in the week, uh, and we continue to talk about it, August 6th is the um, Dia del Salvadoreño. It is the uh, day of the Salvadoran uh, here in Los Angeles, in California. And it is part of the commemoration of the presence of the Salvadoran diaspora. The Salvadoran diaspora is about 40 years old. It's a product of the conflicts of uh, Central America during that time period that uh, have their roots in the um, 50s, 60s, uh, and peaked through the uh, mid-70s into the early 90s. Uh, as a product of those uh, civil wars, uh, much of Central America has moved and taken home here in Los Angeles. Uh, the Salvadoran community is part of that, and they have established uh, themselves here uh, in the city uh, in areas that are part of CD13, CD9, and CD1. Uh, we are very happy to have them. They are a community of entrepreneurs, uh, rich in culture, uh, rich in music, uh, and rich in the hopes and aspirations of every American. And so we are very glad that they're here today. I congratulate uh, a group called Unidad de Comunidades de El Salvador, USA. Uh, and they are here uh, to engage in the 18th um, uh, event. We expect 20,000 people this weekend uh, in my district. Uh, and we are here with uh, uh, Raul Mariona, and he will say a few words. Thank you very much, Mr. Sayyip. Welcome, sir. Good morning. We would like to, in the name of Unicondes, I would like to say thanks to Office uh, Council Member Gil Cedillo for all his support and for being part of this dream who start this uh, motion by two, uh, in the year of 2000. We're learning from your love, we're learning from this office we would like to say thank you for opening his door from his office and for his, his staff. Uh, Luis, I would like to say thank you for all his help for our community and for Unicondes. And thank you, Mr. President, for being here. Thank you very much. Thank you. Let's give him a round of applause. Thanks, thank you. Let's see.
No, thank you. Thank you all. And thank you, Mr. Cedillo. Uh, Madam Clerk, if we could recess the regular meeting and go into the special. Blumenfeld, Bonin, Buscaino, Cedillo, Englander, Fuentes, Harris, Dawson, Weizar, Kretz, Krikorian, Martinez, O'Farrell, Price, Rue, Wesson, 14 members, and a quorum, Mr. President. Thank you uh, very much. Okay, so we're going to go to item eight in the special. I have cards. Uh, Ms. Pierman, Ms. Fogler, Mr. Previn. Mr. President, uh, yes. real quick, items eight and nine are, uh, uh, there is, a, for item number eight, there is a technical correction for number eight. The reference number for recommendation number two is CFR 570.209B3. I, I, capital B, sir. Thank you very much. Okay, Ms. Pierman. Um, sorry, she, um, Miriam's not going to make it. I misunderstood her. Uh, that's why we need uh, telephone conferencing. Anyway, um, t uh, anyway, this thing over here on number eight is the U.S. Department of Housing to advance a loan process to Los Angeles Football Club, $22 million. What is this loan, and is it really necessary? And what is the interest rate on this loan, and what is their payment plan? Why is the HUD involved? Too many questions, so I'm not for this because uh, it really is not transparent. And that's what we really need to be over in the city council is transparent. Because how can you really be, we believe anything that you do when you don't have transparency? I'm going to go exactly on a minute on this one. Uh, 22, uh, doesn't say the Los Angeles Football Club Stadium Distillery Project, which exactly football club this is and what it entails and how that's going to help out anybody other than that full club and have a photo moment. So I'm against it. Thank you. Thank you. And as Ms. Fogler is coming up, I want to indicate members without objection, these items are now before us. She's not here. Okay, if I could get uh, Mr. Previn. Uh, good morning, Council President Wesson. It is Eric Previn uh, on item, I believe, eight, which is a very interesting item, I must say. We are we're, we're reaching out to the Housing and Urban uh, Development for a, a loan uh, in connection with the, uh, the MLS Stadium, which is uh, down in Price's District. It's a, it's a project that I think everybody's excited about. Here, though, we're, what we're doing is we're, we're coughing up. It's a $250 million project, I understand. But we're going to be coming up with 22.5, not for the stadium, because I think there are HUD rules about actually participating in stadiums. And one thing, just parenthetically, important note, uh, one thing that economists agree on uh, internationally, and they, there are very few things they actually agree on, is that these stadium programs often fleece the taxpayers. There's one to look at closely, the Milwaukee Bucks, where Wesley Edens got... Uh, the Scott Walker, the enemy of labor, to provide $250 million in taxpayer funding for the Milwaukee Bucks Stadium. Anyway, this back to our little deal. Fortunately, we're not, this is not for the stadium. This is for the ancillary stadium benefits, whatever the hell that means. So uh, I, don't, I don't really know if that's uh, kosher, but I know this is an application. This is moving forward. Certainly HUD is going to tell us uh, right up front if this is the kind of thing that meets their standards. And, and I understand that this is coming from a place to try to help get this project moving forward. One thing that has not come forward from the auditor controller, though, is who is Celebrity Holdings Realty uh, LLC? We've been, we've been seeking that uh, group from a previous item. Uh, we just want to understand who the members of that are, then we can move forward. But, sir, this one, this one has one f uh, feature that caught my attention, which has to do with um, getting out of this deal. Apparently, we need MLS's um, permission, which seemed odd. And then there was some language about foreclosure, that the foreclosure uh, proceedings must be conducted in according with their rules and policies. Let's put somebody from city attorney on that phrase, because we have city, city has its own rules, federal government has its own We're not going to go along with whatever the guys who are coming in rolling large to get this project going when we have housing and urban development money for EWDD being online. Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. Previn. Thank you. 
Uh, Mr. Spindler, Mr. Walsh, please come forward. Yes, uh, as you can see in letter number D, that would be 4D buried on the second page, negotiate and execute any amendment to the HUD documents that may be needed subject to approval of the city attorney as the form of legality. And then D, negotiate and execute agreements that will subordinate the city loan to a construction or a permanent loan. So therefore, under bankruptcy law, you are using these taxpayer-backed monies as a subordinate loan. Translation, the next time we have a little downturn in real estate, you can go and cram down that second loan. That means the city's taxpayer loses the money. That's why you use an LLC. And what they'll do is they'll incorporate in Wilmington, Delaware, and they will file the Chapter 11 under Delaware law. And us schmucks over here in Los Angeles, because you subordinated our city loan, we lose our fucking money, $22 million. What's wrong with you people? Are you fucking crazy or are you just so corrupt that you just don't understand the definition of a subordinate loan? This is a commercial subordinate loan. The city has to have primary status in case there is a default so that we can take the land back and give the taxpayers back their equity. You're subordinating taxpayer dollars, so what you're doing is, is giving a gift to these people in an LLC, and we don't even know who the fuck owns it. This has to stop, Mr. Dion. It has to stop. This is insanity. Delete that provision. Mr. Walsh, followed by Mr. Herman. John Walsh, blogging at HollywoodHighlands.org, tweeting at Hollywood Dems, and also blogging at Jay Walsh Confidential. Uh, look at the small print. We are going to be spending $250 million, a quarter of a billion dollars, a quarter of a billion dollars for some football stadium. Uh, oh, you've read about it in the L.A. Times. No, you haven't, because any time there's an embarrassing story, the mayor flirts with the gay reporter, David Sennheiser, and gets Stay the story the killed. Okay, uh, the, the subject here is a $22.5 million loan, which you're going to vote for. Rue uh, Scumbag, he, he votes Stay on with, the subject. Uh, with everybody else on this. He has, I'm telling you right now, what is the Los Angeles Football Club? They won't tell you. Where is this money going? They're not going to tell you where this money is going. All we know is that we're incurring enormous... Where is it located? They're not going to tell you uh, because all, the mayor bats his eyes at the L.A. Times reporter and nothing happens. Now we're asking you, if why are we... And look, this is a city where we had bursted water pipes and we had... Coenga Boulevard, wasted, destroyed. And when the people who had their businesses destroyed on Coenga Boulevard asked for some help, you know what you scumbag grew and the rest of them said? We don't have the money you, to help you. We don't have the you're money. You're not on topic. Uh, thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Walsh. Mr. Herman? They don't want you. Thank you. Thank you. No, you're off the uh, subject. You're off the subject. And you're disrupting the meeting. I'll stay particularly on topic regarding HUD's commercial loan. And I'll talk no more other than what Wayne Spiller had mentioned during the LLC bankrupt city by default. So let me stay on topic on item number three on this agenda. It says approve the city loan as described Fuck the motion attached to the fucking council file. Subject the announcements for fucking assessments of the LAFC Stadium Auxiliary Project Activity Project. Fuck you. This has to do with compliance with the fucking California EIQA. 
California Environmental Quality Act. And I'm on topic. Ain't that a fucking bitch? For the hilarious encounter to authorize a general manager for one point fucking billion dollars of city funded money. Keep bonds. your voice down. The I'm not translators. Yelling, so that's keep all I it speak. down. I'm the trooper. I'm in the war zone. This is the trooper. And going back on HUD, HUD needs to audit and control the issue of wasted money, embezzlement, fraud, and abuse by these elected scumbags. And I'm not talking about anyone other than that Dion O'Connell needs to get on the Stay program. Stay on this subject. Stay on the subject and keep your voice down. It adversely affects our translators, Mr. Herman. Dion, Dion has to say Say something on motion regarding price in you, Herb Wesson, relative to the suspension of this HUD money and application because the public wants transparency. We no longer want the city attorney fucking our projects up to give us U.S. Department housing. You see? I've been waiting for housing for nine years. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Let's, uh, members, uh, prepare to vote on this item. Let's open the roll. Close the roll. Tabulate the vote. Fifteen ayes. And and Madam Clerk will do this uh, urgent forthwith. Do I have to vote on that? Yes, Mr. President. Okay, then what I'll do, I'll wait till after the next item and we'll do them both. So let's go to item nine. (laughs) Mr. President, yes. item nine has a substitute motion introduced, and uh, the uh, motion has been distributed already. Okay, so if I could get uh, Ms. Pierman and Mr. Previn and Mr. Spindler. Still no video or telephone conferencing to help people speak to the city council. Uh, freedom of speech, other than liberal left ideology, not important, only bonds. Another bond issue, which we can't afford, H&J, is probably with temporary solutions to homelessness bonds, the, the bonds that live forever, with most money spent on studies and more, uh, and more shelters, temporary house the homeless. No, uh, of course, no place where they can actually shower or have any dignity and have a place where they put their items. Just uh, house them like uh, livestock. No past independence, more dependency on the taxpayers. No dignity, no pride in accomplishments, no place for the kids to actually live. Uh, So that's, you know, this is not going to help down these bond issues. Uh, we seems like we come up with these more bond issues, and uh, the taxpayers are getting a larger amount of uh, t- um, property tax. So this is people. You don't want to vote for any more bond issues. We can't. Um, we already got high enough tax property taxes as it is. They don't care about letting people speak in the valley. They don't care about the San Fernando Valley at all. That's why they uh, have all these things that they want to throw the money away on all these uh, bond issues that no one has ever figured out a way so the people in the San Fernando Valley could speak when they, they, Miriam can't speak today. She's not feeling well. But now that means she's, she's tough out of luck. She has to wait for two more months because you won't come up with vi- telephone, vi- I mean, video conferencing, excuse me, uh, I would love to see telephone conferencing, too. And so you just don't care about us. Video conferencing, Thank bring you. it back. Thank you. So if I get Mr. Previn, Mr. Uh, Spindler, and Mr. Herman. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. It's my understanding that the city has approved uh, the placement of some ballot measures on the uh, for the state general election November 2016, obviously moving quickly, Prop H which is Homeless Reduction, Prevention, Housing, and Facilities Bond. I thought that was a, in excess of $1 billion bond, that, but I may be wrong about that. The, none of the details of this, by the way, are attached, which I, I assume that you could find them. But this is mainly about making clear that the city council gets to determine the order of the, of the 
um, initiatives on the ballot. The letters we can change. We are reserving the right here, thanks to Mr. O'Connell, who reserves the right to uh, change letters if necessary. Any kind of changes we want to make, we can make, and that's being made clear in this letter uh, presented by Herb Wesson. And I, we do appreciate that type of leadership, sir. Now, the question of whether or not you want to lead with homelessness, I think in this document, it's clear that you do, uh, and I assume that that would, you know, at the very end, the other ones that I didn't mention are there's a, uh, an amendment for a charter amendment R for uh, DW that would affect DWP. Uh, and also, of course, the LA uh, Fire and Police Pension and Airport Peace Officers, which is being identified as Charter Amendment Number S for the time being. But as you said, sir, you are going to, uh, well, as I said, you are willing to consider changing the letter designations of the various ballot measures. Uh, I support basically all of these um, going on the ballot and seeing what voters think. But we do need absolute transparency about what is being proposed. And that, of course, has not been provided today, but I assume, because this is on a special meeting agenda, this is a technicality that we just forgot earlier, city attorney forgot. That's why we've only noticed 24 hours the public on this. And it's not a big stakes item, I assume. We'll see. But thank you, sir. Okay, Mr. Spindler, followed by Jason. You still here? Okay. Good. Good. All right, so now we got some pork. No on the first measure. No on the second measure. Vote no on the third measure. Vote no on the fourth measure. No, 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 no to the Homeless Reduction and Prevention Bullshit Proposition H. No on Initiative Ordinance J. No on Charter Amendment 1. No on Charter Amendment 2. No, 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 no. Vote no, 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 no on this goddamn fraud. No, because the money will never go in the pockets of a homeless man. No, because labor standards are bullshit. Look at what happens. The DWP whistleblowers have to sue because the labor standards are being violated. Police officers are suing the LAPD for violation of labor standards. Vote no on Ordinance J. The Water and Power Department is corrupt enough. Vote no. You don't want to make it more corrupt. It's corrupt enough. It's a criminal enterprise. Vote no. And on Charter Amendment 1, that's why I got arrested for the card. Again, Keep vote no. Vote no on Charter Amendment 1. I was falsely imprisoned over Charter Amendment 1. You're off topic. Charter Amendment number 2. Vote no on Charter Amendment 2. There's enough money in those police pensions, airport peace officers. You don't want to join the LAPD, airport police. Stay separate. Vote no. No on Proposition H. No on Ordinance J. No on Charter Amendment 1. No on Charter Amendment 2. And vote no on all the incumbents. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jason Ackerman, followed by Ann Job and Job. Yes, Jason. Good morning. Thank you for coming out here to Van Nuys. Jason Ackerman, Van Nuys Neighborhood Council. Not here in the capacity right now. Um, So, uh, unlike Mr. Spindler, I'm going to say maybe, 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 maybe. Uh, on these ballot issues, and the reason I'm saying maybe is because I don't have. There's no supporting documents available to read right now, so I can't give you a hard yes or a hard no. A lot of these sound really good, um, but they could also go poorly. Uh, homelessness reduction, prevention, housing facilities, sounds great. Um, uh, you know, I'd like to see what that says. Um, you know, if, if that has a, um, affordable housing, labor standards related to city planning, uh, I'd like to see what that says. I mean, do. do I'm trying to figure out if either the two have anything to do with Governor Brown's um, trailer bill that overrides local control on planning issues, which is going to be a disaster for the city. And I'm sorry, I'm going a little off topic there, but I'm just trying to figure out what's related. Um, water and power. I know we've been debating that one in neighborhood council land forever. Um, very ex- interested to see what's on the ballot there. Um, Charter Amendment 2. Uh, police uh, pensions, airport. I mean, I have some ideas for pol- for police pension reform, but I don't think they're in this initiative, which is that um, settlements for wrongful deaths should come out of the police pension fund, not out of the general fund. So that way, it gives the officers a little something to think about before they shoot innocent people. Um, but my, my main frustration is that, again, there's no supporting documents. 
if this were, if this were a neighborhood council meeting, the city attorney would be up our butts about not having supporting documents when we're talking about supporting ballot initiatives. So please, please get someone to produce some documents so I can read what's going on. Thank you. Thank you, Jason. So if I can get Ann Job and uh, Mr. Uh, Herman. Hello, my name is Ann Job. I'm um, a member of the Silmar Neighborhood Council and recently elected to be a budget advocate. Um, in looking at this, I saw the word homelessness. And when I see homelessness, uh, I pay attention. I think I know now that this is a technicality, that, um, that you're simply saying these are the numbers, these are the letters. And I just, uh, and in all cases, I like that things are placed on the ballot so that we can be heard. And I believe that this is all that I have to say on it. Thank you for make, uh, for allowing me to speak. Thank you for coming out. Okay, Mr. Herman, followed by Mr. Walsh. Vote no labor standard violations. Vote no in adoption to item number one. Measure one, Proposition H, vote no. Second measure, Initiative Ordinance J, no. Vote no also on Initiative Measure three. Vote no on Measure Hugo Rosser, no. On DWP, on a public card. Vote no on Measure four, Charter Amendment to Eric Reddy, R-E-A-D-E, vote no. But LAPD police need a pension? Our poor officers rank and file work so goddamn hard they can't get to stay home on the weekends with their families. Rank and file need not a pension. They need a goddamn raise, Mr. Mayor Eric Garcetti. And going back to labor standard violations, a time of the money remind you of homelessness reduction and prevention housing and facility bond. Vote no. Vote no on Proposition H. Why do I say that? Because look out on your streets, public. Look out in your communities, public. And all those GOPs and that Hillary bitch, look out on our streets. Yeah, stay on subject. Look what's happening when the local government and our federal government don't step in to prevent homelessness. Look what happens. And now you want the taxpayers to pay for this? You? Want them to pay for it? Absolutely not. No on measure one, no on measure two, no on measure three, no on measure four, and for the fourth fucking time, vote fucking no, because I'm an American citizen. Fuck you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Mr. Uh, Walsh. John Walsh blogging at HollywoodHighlands.org or Jay Walsh confidential tweeting at Hollywood Dems. What this is, number nine, is the order and letter designation of the four ballot measures. Now, limptic liberals who live west of La Brea will vote for this. The deal is, as long as the homeless, which means black in this city, because the Hispanics take their own people in or they go back to Mexico, all, as long as the homeless are kept east of La Brea, away from my group, the Jews, they're going to go, they're going to vote for this. This is the first measure, Proposition H, Ordinance J, Amendment 1, homeless, 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 homeless. And I want to know, I want you to know where this money is going to go. It's not going to go to the homeless. It's, it's going to further this gigantic bureaucracy that's all for the homeless. It's all for them. I, I, I tr challenge any of you to spend a night in the homeless. Um, uh, I'll go with you. Spend one goddamn night in a homeless shelter. You'll find that it's 90% black, a few Asians. The Asian people are, are, are growing. And uh, as far as uh, it's filthy, it's scummy. And uh, it'll remain that way. And look at all the people who come out here, the homeless pimps. They're 90% white. They all have homes. They've never been homeless. And this money goes into their white 
and white-dominated pockets. And the Jews west of La Brea like it that way. Just keep the goddamn blacks out of our goddamn Jewish neighborhood. HollywoodHighlands.org. Thank you. Okay, that concludes general public comment. Uh, Madam Clerk. Mr. President, if council chooses to uh, uh, to vote on a the substitute motion, a vote is required to substitute. Okay, so let's have the first vote on substitution. Let's open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. Fifteen eyes. Now let's actually vote on the item. Let's open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. Fifteen eyes. Okay, now let's vote on urgent fourth with for items eight and nine. So let's open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. Fifteen eyes. Okay, let's adjourn the special return to the regular meeting. Mr. Uh, Wezar, I haven't checked. with you, but I'd like to defer to Mr. Weezar at this time. Thank you, Mr. President. Buenos dias. Uh, good morning, and I'm happy to honor on council our Ecuadorian brothers and sisters as they celebrate the 207th anniversary of the call for independence in Ecuador. <laughs> Los Angeles is, has a long and rich history made up of people from all over the world, as we all know. And we are a world within a city, and our diversity is one of our greatest strengths. And we're fortunate enough to have a large population of Ecuadorian nationals here in Los Angeles. And it is only fitting that we recognize the struggle for independence that leaders of that proud nation began more than 200 years ago. Today, we celebrate El Grito de la Independencia, a look back in appreciation for what occurred on August 10th, 1809 in Quito. That day inspired other liberations throughout Latin America, and it is the reason we refer to Quito as La Luz de America, or in English, the Light of America, because it was the first and it represents their importance as sparking the light that grew into a flame of independence that allowed Ecuador and other nations to follow, to come out of colonialism and inspire an entire continent into action. Because Ecuador was the first to shout freedom, others followed, and history remembers it well. So I want to thank all our Ecuadorian brothers and sisters here today because that bold Ecuadorian spirit still endures in each and every one of you, and it inspires the rest of us. So thank you for your heart, your courage, your strength, y que viva Ecuador. All right. We have some special guests with us today, and I want to welcome uh, from Ecuador. Uh, they're visiting us for the weekend, including Licenciado Diego Benitez, president of the Fundación Vista para Todos. Bienvenido. I also want to welcome Fundación Contra el Cancer del Ecuador and other guests who are here today as well. Bienvenidos también. Muchísimas gracias. I would like to also recognize and give a big thanks to the Comité Cívico Catoriano in Los Angeles for putting together a series of events this week that showcases the Ecuadorian pride, spirit, and culture. And this year, our festivities will be bittersweet. Uh, we are not only acknowledging Ecuador's independence, but it is special as we honor our dear friend and community activist, Elba Barus, who passed away earlier this year. Elba was a fighter who fought until her last day on earth to ensure that these festivities continued and that the Ecuadorian community would grow even stronger and united and that the city of Los Angeles recognize Ecuadorian history and culture. Uh, many of you may have run into her. She would visit many council offices uh, talking to talk to you about the Ecuadorian uh, events. And this weekend we will celebrate Elba's legacy and uh, celebrate her commitment and passion not only to Ecuador, but to the city of Los Angeles. 
So congratulations on making the 207th year of independence a celebration that is not only celebrated in Ecuador, but here in the city of Los Angeles. We invite all of you to join us uh, this Sunday along Broadway that will end with a festival at El Pueblo. Gracias, que viva la independencia de Ecuador, que viva Alba Berus y que viva Los Angeles. Muchísimas gracias. And now I'd like to invite um okay. Buenos días con todos. Gracias por recibirnos. Quisiera empezar diciendo en el Ecuador la riqueza no se mide por millones, sino simplemente por amigos, por personas como ustedes que quieren mucho al Ecuador. Buenos días. Good morning. En el Ecuador la riqueza no medimos por millones de dinero. In the Ecuador we do not uh, measure the wealth by millions by. Medimos por los amigos que tenemos y ustedes son amigos de los ecuatorianos por permitirnos estar aquí. But we measure our wealth by the amount of uh, friends that we have and you are our friends because you allow us to be here with you. El 16 de abril tuvimos un terremoto donde murieron 672 personas. In April the 16th, we had an earthquake, a major earthquake, and 676 people died. Se sintió la solidaridad de los ecuatorianos y del mundo entero. We felt the solidarity with the citizens of Ecuador and the citizens of the world. Hoy festejamos 207 años de independencia del Ecuador. Today we're celebrating 207 day, uh, years of independence of Ecuador. Con mucha sencillez y sobre todo con mucho patriotismo. Very proud and very uh, patriotic. Dios les bendiga a ustedes por esa paciencia que tienen. Ya quisiéramos tener nosotros un Ecuador igual. Thank you so much for the patience that you have. We would like for Ecuador to be like the United States. 207 años de independencia donde el Ecuador ha cambiado y ha evolucionado mucho. 207 years of independence where Ecuador has changed and has evolutionized a lot. Gracias por tenernos aquí, por festejar con nosotros estos 207 años. Thank you for having us here. Thank you for celebrating with us 207 years. Estoy aquí con un alcalde de una de las ciudades más importantes del Ecuador. I'm here with one of the mayors of one of the cities of most important in the Ecuador. Clever es alcalde de la ciudad del Puyo. Tena. Uh, he's the mayor of the city of Tenan. En representación de los ecuatorianos que apreciamos mucho este país. In representation of the Ecuadorian citizens that we love this country very much, we appreciate the, this country very much. Queremos entregar a el concejal que aprecia y mucho también a nuestros conciudadanos residentes en Los Ángeles. We want to uh, give this offering to the city council um, because you appreciate our citizens here. Un souvenir que representa la identidad. This is a souvenir that represents the identity. La identidad del pueblo de la Amazonía del Ecuador. This is a souvenir that represents the identity of the Amazonic, uh, the citizens that, that reside in the Amazon jungle of Ecuador. El guerrero indígena. The warrior, the indigenous. Y la mujer quichua trabajadora. And the woman, the quichua uh, worker. Y un presente de la vegetación, la selva y las especies que existen en la Amazonía del Ecuador. And at present, this represents the, veget the vegetation that exists in the Amazonic area of El Ecuador. Con mucho cariño, 
de la ciudad de Tena, la provincia de Napo, en Ecuador. Queremos entregar este presente al señor concejal. And this comes from the city of Tenan. This is a gift and offering from the city of Tenan to the city council. Muchas gracias. Thank you so much. Gracias. Could you could you please thank the mayor? Could could you thank the mayor on on our behalf as the uh, as the president of the the council? I want him to know that we're honored uh, to accept his lovely gift and that we're very uh, appreciative. And uh, they, he's welcome here anytime. And that our mayor is in Brazil, so I am the acting mayor today. So I, as the mayor of the city of Los Angeles, I want to thank you for the gift to the city council. Yeah. Igualmente para usted, señor presidente. Likewise for you, uh, Mr. President. The same gift. The, oh, the same gift. We get, oh, you're a good man. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Thank you, sir. Yeah. But, Mr. President, they know how much you love hats, and so you have your own. Uh, uh, yeah, okay. Thank you very much. That you can wear as well. Thank you. Thank you very much. I get a lot of use out of those. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Let's give him one more round of applause. I want to thank you, Mr. Weezar, and thank all of you. Thank you very much. And so on behalf of the city of Los Angeles, our mayor, and the city council, we'd love to present this resolution to the uh, 207th anniversary Ecuadorian Independence Day. Uh, muchísimas gracias. Aquí estamos con ustedes para siempre trabajar para mejorar las vidas de los ecuadorianos aquí en Los Angeles y también en Ecuador. Muchísimas gracias. Adelante. Again, thank you. Uh, we're going to go into its, its uh, general public comment at this time, correct, Madam Clerk? So I'm going to call Mr. Candido Marez and Jason Ackerman, followed by Mr. Previn. Good morning, Mr. President. Good morning and good to see you, sir. And uh, also, Mr. Mayor, it sounds good. It sounds good, sir. Um, First of all, I uh, want to make it very clear, very proud to be part of the 12th district, honored to have Mr. Mitch Englinger as my councilman. We're not buds. The fact is he's one of the best councilmen we have, a councilman we've ever had in a long time. Uh, today's paper shows that uh, former LAPD security chief to sue. This gentleman, I know him. Uh, I don't like him. I didn't think he was much of a, a chief, but I have to listen to his words and his comments because we know that the Golden Goose, DWP, has issues. And either we fix those Wait, issues... Hold, hold his time. Mr. Herman, hold time, sit... Hold, time. Hold, hold his time. Mr. Herman, sit down. Just don't disrupt him when he's speaking. In fact, start off... Go, go, go on, Candida. Thanks. Just that, that is so not right, and I will not allow you to do that. Thank go you, ahead. Sir. Thank you, sir. Again, the Golden Goose GWP has issues, but we need to protect the workers. We need to uh, work, uh, protect the people who are doing a great job. We need to uh, fix our infrastructure, Mr. President. The pipelines one day are going to just, it's going to be amazing what's going to happen. And we have the workforce. We have the greatest workforce in the country at DWP. But we need to protect those people who are willing to stand up and say there is something wrong. And even though I don't agree with this former uh, security head, uh, he was a jerk. But uh, I want to hear what he has to say. Uh, maybe we can... Um, Send over Mr. O'Donnell over there. I, th I know he's, he has great eyes and he sees a lot of things. But again, let's keep an eye on what he's trying to say and let's try to fix what's at DWP. It goes back to who's there. Mr. Gary uh, Wong has been there a long time, a long time. I'd like you to take a look at all the lawsuits who have been with, that have been filed there, sir. Again, thank you for Mr. Mayor. We <laughs> look forward to this. Thank you, Jason. Followed by Mr. Previn. Jason Ackerman. Followed by Mr. Previn. All right. Good morning. Uh, so, uh, first off, it's been said before, it's going to be said again. We need to bring back video conferencing to Van Nuys. Maybe we need to expand the technology so we do like Google Hangouts so people can, like, you know, check out the meetings from their homes and not 
schlep out um, or from the libraries. Uh, there's all sorts of options. But I want to talk about uh, Governor Bounds, uh, a streamlining affordable housing trailer bill. Um, it's being attached onto the state legislature budget. And if it is approved, it will let any development with 20% or more affordable housing, if it's not near transit, or 10% affordable housing, if it is near transit, or 5% for very low income housing, uh, to bypass um, all local um, input processes, including EIRs and CEQA and all that stuff. So I think we should oppose this and call for higher minimums of affordable housing, and especially next to transit, not away from transit. Thank you. Thank you. If I could get Ms. Pierman. Donna, followed by Mr. Walsh. Donna Pierman, if you're still here, followed by Mr. Walsh. Yeah, Los Angeles. Usually Hillary lies so much, she doesn't know how to stop. Los Angeles, I'm happy to state Hillary told the truth one time. I quote, she said, I'm going to tax the middle class. I'm going to tax the middle class. Believe me, she will. It means low middle, uh, low middle class also. Los Angeles taxpayers have to pay for free college education for all. Obama, Hillary, health care, lousy health care for all. Studies that look at global warming, more restrictions on business with home ownership at all time low. Recession of seven, se seven years. Los Angeles, do you really want four to eight more years of Hillary or Obama? It's a wonderful recession. Higher prices make, uh, makes your, uh, make salary never high enough to live on. Unemployment, except for public sector, uh, uh, on all-time low, especially African-American males. I mean, I'm sorry, all-time high. Jobs at all-time low, especially African-American males. Clearly see more homeless in Los Angeles, more on general relief. They can't live on, they can't afford housing. Thank basic. you, thank you, thank you. Mr. Walsh, Mr. Walsh followed by Mr. Herman. John Walsh blogging at HollywoodHighlands.org. I hope everyone, you can see it on my tweet. Uh, hanging Hillary Clinton posted by Riverside County GOP. There's a man here who, who is standing there with blood all over him. And uh, this is a threat by the Riverside. I would wonder, Mr. Wesson, you are worried about being threatened by hanging. You don't have the guts to file a complaint against uh, Donald Trump. When he threatens Hillary Clinton's life, you only go after uh, white guys. Why don't you? This is an absolute threat on Hillary Clinton's uh, life. And nobody does a goddamn thing, including you limp dick liberal pieces of fucking shit. And that includes your mothers. HollywoodHighlands.org, scumbag Wesson. Okay. All right, Mr. Herman, followed by Mr. Spindler. One minute, one minute only of general public comment. Mr. Hertzberg, when I was up at your office at 9 a.m. today, this is the problem, Mr. Hertzberg, in Sacramento. Give us back our fucking two minutes and you don't have to take all these intensifiers. But you draw it out of us. You reel us in. You reel us in, like fishing with a hook. And here's the hook. Ralph M. Brown Act, Mr. O'Connell. Dion, Monopoly man, I'm talking to you. Why don't you listen? Why don't you listen, Dion? The truth is, you don't give a damn about constituents. You don't give a damn about the law. The same way you fuck Wayne Spindler with a 422 APC, and fuck you, Eric Reed, R E A D E, you stupid punk. And the rest of you punks who take advantage of our First Amendment right to advocate. That's why you put a slap on us to make us be. Thank you, quiet. thank you, thank you. Mr. Previn, I'm sorry to. Call you. You should have been the next speaker, Mr. Previn. Thank you, sir. It's Eric Previn from uh, CD2. Today, I was reading in the the Los Angeles Times about how the District Attorney's Public Integrity Division uh, has has bungled badly uh, once again. They they were prosecuting the Coliseum Commission. I think we all remember it was a debacle, and um, <laughs> they have. Uh, the two individuals from that group called Rotella, I forget the exact name, uh, Insomniac or whatever, these guys who were running these raves, 
uh, and doing corrupt things, uh, and also lobbying through England or Konami and Allen, by the way, FYI, back in 2010. They quickly stopped that. But they uh, are not doing any time. And so this is yet another crescendo of displeasure by the public who would like to see people held accountable. Now, what they said was, uh, the judge said, after saying, oh, my God, uh, in response to the DA's uh, blunder, she said, um, let's, uh, you know, uh, what are we going to do? How do we get Jackie Lacey to step forward and make this division meaningful? Because if they can't handle complex cases, as she was saying. Thank, thank you, Mr. Previn. Mr. Uh, Spindler? Why are people hiring Englander Kanabi and Allen to destroy my life? Xerox Business Services, what does terrorizing me have to do with printing and publication? United Taxi, why are you hiring Englander Kanabi and Allen to suppress my free speech? Coca-Cola Corporation, why are you selling soda? What the hell does that have to do with me? Leave me alone. Beverly Hills Greater Los Angeles Association of Realtors. I love you guys. We're friends. We've done business. You hire Englander, Kanabi, and Allen to terrorize me. Why? I'm with you, not against you. Art of Living Foundation USA. Why do you hire Englander, Kanabi, and Allen to suck me up and destroy my life and work with detectives and file false charges and false statements about me? Why do you force me into federal court to sue the city? Get your goddamn law firm, get your goddamn Englander and Kanabi under control, please. Thank you. That concludes um, general public comment. That brings us where, Madam Clerk? Mr. President, council has motions for posting a referral. Okay, they are posted, they are referred. And the desk is clear. Members' announcements. Mr. O'Farrell. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, well, ladies and gentlemen, tonight is the opening ceremonies of the games of the 31st Olympiad, otherwise known as the Olympic Games, uh, in Rio. And uh, it's an opportunity every four years to draw inspiration from a world event uh, that uh, offers incredible personal stories of transcending difficulties, uh, as well as the, the creation of Olympic champions that we can all celebrate and draw inspiration from. So I hope everyone will enjoy the 31st Olympic Games from Rio. And um, let's continue working to make sure that the terms are right so that we can have the uh, 2024 Olympics in Los Angeles. Secondly, I'd like to say that uh, we are having our summer series of uh, films at Echo Park Lake starting tomorrow night. And it's going to be a summer of uh, Hollywood classic musicals. And we're kicking it off with Cabaret, the Bob Fosse directed created musical uh, starring Liza Minnelli, and it will uh, be shortly after 8 p.m. tomorrow night at Echo Park Lake. It's free. We invite the public to come and enjoy this uh, Hollywood classic. Thank you. Mr. Bynan. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, thank you, colleagues. Uh, a few announcements today. Uh, this weekend at the world-famous Venice Beach Skate Park, there is going to be a children's uh, helmet giveaway. Uh, we're going to be giving away helmets starting at 11 a.m. tomorrow to any kids uh, who need one. Uh, and then on Sunday, two events I wanted to mention. Uh, I'll be joining the Audubon Society at 8.30 it's Sunday morning uh, for a hike through the Bayona Wetlands in Saltwater Marsh. Uh, anybody is welcome to join us. Uh, we generally have folks from all throughout the district who come on the hikes. Uh, we're meeting at 303 Culver Boulevard at 8.30 a.m. And finally, uh, this Sunday is the 10th anniversary of the Mar Vista Farmer's Market, and there will be uh, special ceremonies at uh, 12.30 uh, at the Farmer's Market, which is at Venice and Grandview. Thank you. Uh, announcements, any more announcements? And now if everyone would please rise. If everyone in the council chambers would please rise for adjourning motions. I'm going to look to my left. Mr. Uh, Fuentes. Thank you, uh, Council President Wesson. Colleagues, it's with a uh, heavy heart that I ask that we adjourn in memory of my great uncle, Hector Diaz Fuentes, who passed away on July 22nd. Uh, Hector Diaz Fuentes was born in El Tigre, Michoacán on March 13th in 1936, and he was the sixth child of Ubistano Fuentes Torres and Lalia Diaz Barriga. Uh, the Fuentes brood, at least this part of it, there were 15 births and 12 children who survived, and he was number six in the lineup. In uh, 
1958, my great uncle, like so many of us uh, in my community, uh, their families immigrated to the United States, and he immediately began working with his older brothers. The patriarch of our family, Ismael, who we lost recently, and my grandfather, Felipe. He worked in construction and joined the laborers local 300, and it was uh, always the case at special family functions and events that he proudly wore his local 300 regalia. Uh, in fact, when we buried him, he was wearing his local 300 tie pin. It was one of his favorites. For 30 years, my uncle worked to improve numerous infrastructure projects, including the San Onofre nuclear plant, the I-14, the LADWP aqueduct in Silmar, Six Flags Magic Mountain, and many other public works projects throughout the region. In 1966, my great uncle married Anita Marie Solorio Tewksbury, and in 1968, they had their only son, Hector D. Years after he widowed, he lived his last 10 years with his beloved Blanca Estela, and you could often see the two of them assisting in all of the line, lawn sign operations that we were involved with, and Blanca was right there along with my uncle. My uncle had a great heart and loved so many people, and he was the first to offer, and he rarely said no. It, it didn't matter if you were a neighbor or a family friend. He was never on time, but he always got there, and he figured out how to help everybody, whether it was trimming a tree or working on a car. It didn't matter what the project was. Uncle Hector was there with his trademark smile. Um, family being his world, he was one of the few brothers that actually went to the great efforts to travel, to visit family. So he would travel everywhere to, to visit them, whether it was in the San Fernando Valley, in Mexico, in Texas, uh, Santa Maria, Los Angeles, Stockton, wherever the family was, my Uncle Hector, you could guarantee, would make it a point to be there. And um, he would later on travel more than anybody else, really, to visit other parts of this great planet and um, very much enjoyed coming back and ribbing his brothers and sisters about how big the planet was and how small sometimes they were and not wanting to go see it. Um, we have fond memories of my Uncle Hector. He is now reunited with my great-grandparents, Ubistano and Ulalia, our Aunt Elena, Uncle Ismael, and his wife, Maitia Luisa. He is survived by his beloved partner, Blanca Estela, his son, Hector D., and his three granddaughters and four great-grandchildren. He leaves behind my grandfather, Felipe Fuentes, as now the patriarch of the family, my uncle Carlos, um, these are the great uncles, Luis and Ubistano, along with my great aunts, Maria, Lupe, Maria Luisa, Josefina, and Lola. May he rest in peace. Mr. Uh, uh, Harris Dawson. Colleagues, I have uh, two adjourning uh, motions that I'd uh, ask you all to join me in. The first uh, is for Nicolasa Hernandez, born in 1927 in uh, Torreon, Mexico, uh, passed away on July 25th of this year in Pasadena, California, uh, a longtime uh, community member and the mother of a great friend of the city, uh, one and only Antonia Hernandez. Uh, her funeral was uh, earlier this week. Uh, second, uh, Mr. Ted Henley, Jr., 72, of Los Angeles, uh, born in Mississippi, migrated to California in 1948, uh, where he went to Dorsey High School, uh, held uh, various jobs before he became a pest control technician at LAUSD, uh, where he spent uh, almost 20 years uh, doing that work and becoming a, a community leader and, and mentor to so many young people in the community around uh, Dorsey High School. Uh, he is survived uh, by three uh, children and his former wife. Thank you. I'm still looking to my left. Now I'm looking to the right. I don't see any to my right. Uh, members, this meeting is adjourned. <laughs>